Well, that turned out to be kind of a big affair, now didn't it? I was just stopping into what I thought was a little side room, and it turned out that there was a whole museum in there. That was where the Norwegian Resistance Museum was. Uh, you can have a look back at that with me right now. Right off the bat, we can see Nazi paraphernalia. And that's because the Nazis invaded Norway during the Second World War. But Norway put up a hell of a fight with some really, really cool insurrection type stuff. I wonder if we'll see an exhibit about Mox Manus. He's the most famous war hero in Norway. Ooh. Actual footage from the Second World War. Looks like they're dug in pretty good. Resistance groups fought a number of brief actions with German units and Norwegian Nazis during the last few days of the war. There were Norwegian Nazis? A couple of different kinds of guns here. I've got a rocket propelled grenade. I've got what looks like a bazooka, several types of rifles, if I'm not mistaken that's an M1 carbine. I like those. Let's see what's down here. Norwegians of course known for ski attacks. They were actually able to burn down those mountains on skis and then fire with rifles while they were going, which is pretty incredible given the fact that I can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. So I choke, it's bad. Side-loaded firearms were, of course, popular in the Second World War. They must have picked that up from the English. That's like a grease gun. Those are hard to come by. Armaments workshops. Homemade firearms. The unfortunate fact of the matter is that almost immediately upon Nazi invasion, the Norwegians surrendered, but then, after they surrendered and their king had fled to England, he called for men to come to England for training, and many, many Norwegians managed to make their way over there, received their orders, went back, pretended to be civilians, and started weapons manufacturing workshops and bomb squads. They would scuttle ships in the harbor, cause as much havoc for the Germans as possible. And Oslo was a hugely important port. So having those bombs go off every few days or weeks and sink those ships caused Hitler a hell of a lot of trouble. These are of course the prison camps created by the Nazis. Replica of Auschwitz it appears. Not a pleasant place. These images bring up some of the most horrible stories that Americans are brought up on, of course. We um, 
we kind of glorify the Second World War. We make it into this big, uh, you know, heroic deal. But of course, it was actually really, really ugly. And uh, the Norwegians understood that. Is it various uh, police batons, blackjacks, and whips and flails? Used by the Gestapo. Despite the fact that I'm sure there's a couple of kind, you know, not kind, but reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Some artifacts belonging to him, I think. Josef Terboven. On Falkenhurst. Doesn't look like a very nice man. Spare munitions cache, a helmet. with typewriters and printing presses for creating propaganda to fight against the Nazi invasion in order to transport these messages they hid them in little hollowed out logs pretty clever I once heard a story about a nine-year-old girl who ran messages back and forth between the resistance messenger members. Little messages written on the bottoms of her feet. The only thing the Nazis didn't search. And this is all of these super illegal telecommunications equipment that they used to relay messages back and forth. You can see all the different flags of the different regions. Wow. Serious stuff, guys. This is a cool museum. It's pretty amazing in here. It just keeps going. I've seen exhibits about microfilm that was secreted away in the handle of a faucet on the train to Sweden. Stories about document forgery, how they were able to create falsified work papers that allowed people to get into the industrial zones that were locked off by the Germans. And using those passes, they got in, planted bombs, and caused all kinds of other problems. Wasn't that fascinating? I thought so. I was really blown away by some of the stuff that I saw in there. There's the objects from the past that, you know, kind of have a serious weight to them. There's also some horrific stories that I never really wanted to hear. But, uh, but those things did happen. And uh, I think it's important that we remember them because, you know, there's the old saying, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Um, I think it's not just a matter of forgetting the past. I think, I think a horrific reminder every now and then helps a lot, to be honest. So... With any luck, uh, people will learn from the past, and uh, and we can live in a more peaceful, friendly society. Never have to worry about things like that happening again. created radios inside the prison camps using a set of dentures.